I'm Gareth Hines, and uh, I do graphic novels based on the classics, and my most recent book is Macbeth. I love teachers. Teachers are my biggest fans, and, and I'm a huge fan of yours. Um, and a lot, you know, a lot of what I'm doing now is for teachers. When I first started out, I was just making the books that I wanted to make, and Beowulf was one of my favorite classics, and I wanted to retell this action story. But now that I really understand uh, how much of a valuable tool this can be in the classroom, uh, you know, I, I really want to. I, I want to help kids enjoy these classics, and I want that to be a, a valuable tool for teachers to, um, to be able to, to use it in the classroom, not just to get the kids introduced to the classic, but I think reading it in that graphic novel form makes it accessible to them in a way that allows them to dig deeper into the text and to go after themes and imagery and symbolism and, and all that good stuff that you want them to be able to pull out that sometimes they can't because they're struggling with the language. So to me, that's, that's very important. And it's very gratifying to hear when that works uh, and when teachers are using my books in the classroom. Uh, I just love that. I think we all love stories. And I think that um, you know, sometimes uh, we don't necessarily enjoy, or we, don't, we can't appreciate all the good qualities of a story. And especially, I think this is true for the classics, and it's one of the reasons why I like to turn the classics into graphic novels, is because they really are cool stories. But it can be hard to sort of get to that coolness because you're struggling with the language a little bit. Um, but first of all, I think it's worth it. I think that struggle is worthwhile, and you, and you learn a lot from it. Um, but also, you know, you can you can find other stories that are told in other ways, whether it's a graphic novel or it's you know it's a picture book or it's an animation, and um, you're you know you're still reading, you're still getting, um, you're going on that journey and you're using your imagination. And um, I think it's I think you find those stories that you really like and that you really enjoy, and then gradually that will expand your comfort with other material to read. Uh, and then hopefully, you know, for example, with my books, uh, you can learn to really, you know, to love Beowulf, and then you can read the original Beowulf, and you already know what the story is, and it'll be a lot easier and more fun. I've always drawn. I've been drawing since I was, you know, a toddler and I started to want to tell picture stories and I knew from reading picture books growing up that I wanted to have a picture and some text but you know I wasn't really that good at figuring out what exactly were the words going to be and so I have this little book where I wrote uh, I, I drew all these elaborate pictures and then I wrote I will not write anything in my five-year-old phonetic spelling and I do not want to write at all and so I always wanted to tell these stories but I, I mostly wanted to do it with the pictures and that you know kind of predicted my my uh, my future my present because uh, I do definitely try to let the pictures do a lot of the work and even though I'm working with these really kind of hard hitting exquisite words by by people like Shakespeare and Homer um, I'm still I'm still using the imagery to kind of to do most of the heavy lifting of the story and. Um, and even to remove a lot of narration when I can and just, just have the text be dialogue. Well, my first book was Beowulf, uh, which of course is a great old English epic about a monster hunting uh, Viking warrior. And uh, then I did King Lear and The Merchant of Venice, two of Shakespeare's great plays. And uh, then The Odyssey, which is probably my most popular book. Uh, and then after that, uh, Romeo and Juliet, uh, which of course is Shakespeare's most beloved, uh, most popular play, and uh, now Macbeth, the Scottish play. I love Macbeth. It is um, also definitely one of the great plays of Shakespeare. Um, it is wonderful. It has such wonderful supernatural imagery, uh, so that was just I knew that was going to be really fun to illustrate, and uh, especially you know all the stuff with the ghosts and the apparitions and the the hallucinations that he has. That stuff was all incredibly fun to illustrate. Uh, it's also just you know it's a great play about free will, um, you know not just about murder and guilt and and things that hopefully we never encounter in our real lives, but uh, but about this notion of how you know just how we choose to live with the information and how we use the information we're given. I find Macbeth and Lady Macbeth to be really interesting compelling characters uh, you know there's so much there's so much strength there but also of course you know things that just go subtly wrong that that get magnified into horrible mistakes <laughs>